We are here at Lake Whitehall at the Gatehouse, a private area that is just beautiful. I hadn't known about before, but now know about in a wonderful time uh, sitting down, looking forward to talking with Muriel Kramer of Hopkinton. I hope you will join us on this uh, beautiful hot day of July. Hi Muriel, thank you for meeting with me today by beautiful Lake Whitehall at the Gatehouse area yes. here. I didn't know about this spot. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful gorgeous. spot. Thank yes. you. Yeah, it is a beautiful spot. I love this spot. Hmm. Uh, and uh, we are here because I asked you to suggest one of your favorite places yeah. in the town. You've lived here for 25 years yep. now and here we are. Can you tell a little bit about why you picked this particular spot? Yeah, uh, so I live close to Lake Whitehall, not right on the lake. Um, but for me, Lake Whitehall really represents um, not the whole of what Hopkinton has to offer, but something really special about Hopkinton. Hopkinton has many, many beautiful spots, um, really hidden, quiet mm -hmm. treasures. Mm -hmm. So nature is very important to me and my family. My, my family hikes around this lake a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do a lot of boating, but other people do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. spot for kayaking, but it just is, um, it's open for everyone. It will be, because it's a state park and there's some conservation property here that the town has purchased, um, it's open to everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a place where anybody can come. I like it a lot when it's only me, but we talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also like it a lot when it's, it's filled with uh, boaters and hikers and fishermen mm. and uh, it's a it's a beautiful little spot that is uh, very representative for me of what I love about this town mm -hmm. wide open spaces lakes trees mm -hmm. um, places where families can come mm. that's true mm. and not always highlighted about Hopkinton mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of attention focused on the marathon of mm -hmm. course which is very important the Boston Marathon mm -hmm. um, but that there are so many hidden beautiful places it's yeah. a good reminder and on this day it's perfect it so is perfect thank you yes. for suggesting oh that. thank you for coming this is awesome it is um 25 years you've been here can you yes. tell a little bit about where you came from before uh that 25 sure years? so um my i grew up in worcester mm -hmm. and my husband grew up in upstate new york and we were stationed at hanscom air force base in wow. bedford mass mm -hmm. right out of college and so we had first lived in the Chelmsford area, which was a lovely spot to be as well. But mm -hmm. as we were looking, once we had two children and a third on the way, we were looking for a, a place where we could uh, have that experience that so many of us like to have, the sandbox, the swing set, the family mm -hmm. dog, um, and a nice community to raise your family in. And uh, I knew nothing about Hoppington. My husband didn't either. Mm -hmm somebody suggested we look we thought why not and uh and absolutely it, it, this town captured our heart and of course when the realtor brought us through um takes us through the center of town points out the start of the boston marathon which doesn't mean that much to you until you experience it and you mm -hmm. live here for a little while or didn't to me necessarily um, but Hopkins and Drug was on one corner, Colella's was on the other mm. corner. The grocery uh, store. Mm -hmm. Family owned businesses. Um, Carboni's was a restaurant mm -hmm. that my father and mother had brought us to as oh. kids. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. Mm. Again, a family, a family run business. A lot of what was very, um, very immediately apparent was very inviting to us. Mm. And mm -hmm. we loved that really uh, small town feel mm -hmm. that er, you know many people talk about mm -hmm. and uh, and we have just been so happy raising uh, all our kids have gone through the hopping in public schools and uh, we know that that's a huge resource now mm -hmm. that's uh, six children right six children yes, just yes. six I <laughs> often say only six only six <laughs> that's a good amount yep. yeah and I have two still in the in the school system um, hmm. so we've seen a lot of things change over time uh, but there's been a lot of uh, wonderful consistency so it's a community that rallies around its school you mm -hmm. know there's been a lot of opportunities for me but for many of us to volunteer and so many people step up and make the schools and the sports programs and the scouting programs so vibrant and mm -hmm. fabulous for our children so yeah so that's it really this has been a wonderful place to set down roots mm -hmm. I feel like this is uh, certainly become 
my permanent home. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice to mm -hmm. hear. And you say a lot of good and true things yeah. uh, uh, about the town. Um, you grew up in Worcester, um, yep. and uh, were you in a large family as well? No, actually, um, I have two brothers, uh, but I was also the product of a broken home, so we mm -hmm. actually never lived together. So I had kind of a, mm -hmm. I had kind of a different experience, mm -hmm. um, and uh, my parents no longer live. You know, my father moved to Wyoming, my mother mm -hmm. moved wow. to Rockport. So for me personally, this has been my opportunity to. Uh, to have a new home home base. Mm -hmm. My husband's from uh, upstate New York and his dad still lives there. So he has that experience from his family, mm -hmm. but uh, this is sort of my experience here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, you have an interesting path we'll talk about in a minute mm -hmm. of what you have done with family and work uh, over time. What would you say in your childhood years you like to do spending your time mm. when you weren't in school in Worcester? I have always been a bookish Book. person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say that my my first great escape and probably my fondest pastime will always be books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you're at the library a lot. At the library mm -hmm. a lot. These kids today don't know how easy they have it with uh -huh. the ability to access so much information. Um, not being at a library. It's interesting, but yes, I was at the library a lot. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Were you outdoors uh, since it sounds like you have a connection with nature? Too? Yeah, so I would um, I would very often, I, it's, it's such an interesting question because I haven't really thought about my mm -hmm. childhood in a long time, but I would take a book out to a spot, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. it doesn't necessarily, I didn't, you know, when I was a child, I wasn't able to sort of go someplace, but if I could find a tree Huh. and a patch of shade, mm -hmm. um, that's where I would be reading a book. And, wow, how about that? And yeah. Here we are, there's a tree, <laughs> are. trees right over you here. <laughs> yes. We just don't have the book at this moment. No. Uh, maybe later today, but uh, I know you don't have a lot of leisure time, mm. uh, which has been the case uh, for uh, I, probably since you've been in Hopkinton, what yeah. I've known of you, um, that you've had an interesting work path. Can you talk a little bit about getting started at the Air Force? what you did there and yeah, the absolutely. direction you took from there so um, when I left um, when I left school on my way to the Air Force I thought that I would be a full-time career person mm -hmm. and a mom obviously mm -hmm. too so my path was my my intended path was to be to work full-time um, while raising my children um, when I was at the air in the Air Force I worked for uh, the Joint Tactical Information Distribution System. Wow. It's kind of, the acronym is JTIDS. And that means? And that means it's a little black box that does a lot of uh, fancy things. So that was a system. It was, you know, state of the art at the time. Hanscom at the time, and I, I believe still is, is, a, is, you know, works on state of the art electronics. Mm. Um, it was um, a communication tool that allowed uh, the pilot to to I know on a screen to identify everybody else in the air whether they were a friend a foe or an unknown mm. so it was state-of-the-art mm -hmm. so the AWACS which a lot of people know the AWACS plane actually Ken Wisemail in town I think worked on the AWACS oh, program uh -huh. um, it was it's a big system and they may have a, a more advanced system now I'm sure but it was a big system to sort of identify ground mm. the JTIS was a system to identify air Okay. Activity. Mm -hmm. uh, and you worked on the engineering way. of that? Yeah, I would, actually my very first job was configuration management, uh, hmm. um, which was, um, is the uh, fine art of making sure you, you keep your documentation completely intact and in order. Mm -hmm. So as these systems grow and develop and are, begin to be deployed in uh, different on different platforms so different airplanes and then it actually it went into different platforms including navy ships um, to make sure that the documentation that goes with these items when they go um, is completely up to date and uh, standardized and functional for whoever picks it up to use it okay. um, it's you know not a very um, flashy job but important pretty detail-oriented job um, so yeah but but that job enabled me to it was a it was a multi-platform multi-service 
multi-country program. So mm -hmm. as a kid, when I think about wow. it, as a kid, um, I was in charge of a lot of money, mm -hmm. a lot of equipment. I traveled to NATO. I interacted with wow. people, in, yeah, mm -hmm. as a kid coming out of college. Mm -hmm. So that was my little pitch for, uh, for uh, the excitement, even when it doesn't sound excitement, of no, uh, yeah. military service. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so where did you travel? Uh, I mostly traveled. I mostly traveled in country mm -hmm. to Hughes Aircraft Company in Anaheim, California, mm -hmm. um, and then also eventually to New Jersey, sunny mm -hmm. New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, but also to Brussels. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. when we were putting uh, the JTIS terminal uh, in Army locations, they were in remote locations. We had a couple trips. Uh, another lieutenant and I, which were, were phenomenal. Um, traveling the countryside in Germany wow. from spot to spot to spot to make mm -hmm. sure that they could those um, those pieces of equipment could be installed mm. appropriately and used appropriately um, pretty fascinating yes. actually yeah. I went um, one time I, we had some trouble with the terminal so it was in development coming onto production had some trouble with the terminal so that's when I entered the picture for my job and one of my trips was overseas to a German air base. Hmm because they had had a front, you know, they had had the system before us, mm -hmm. a little bit before us deployed in the field, and they had some strategies and techniques for maintaining the system. Mm -hmm. And so I went out to see about that. And uh, when I arrived, I had no idea why I was getting, I knew that there wouldn't be a lot of women. Mm -hmm. There were no women. Wow. There's no women then in uh -huh. the, the, I guess the German Air Force, mm -hmm. I don't know, but there were no women. Mm -hmm. I And I'm like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. this is, this is an interesting, interesting time you to be alive. You were in a way at <laughs> yes, that time, right? Yes, exactly. And your title then was? I was just a lieutenant. lieutenant. I was just a mm -hmm. you know, regular lieutenant in the United States Air Force. So. But that's not necessarily just, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Wow, how interesting. Yeah, it is. And then uh, come, going back a little bit, uh, what did you study that uh, was your background math. from college? Math. I have and, a degree in well, math. Well, that makes sense for yeah. the responsibility you yeah. had. Yep. Wow, and so who knew? Who you know, knew? When they see Muriel <laughs> on the street here in Hopkinton. And from there you went into um, town government and motherhood? Well, so from there I had my first child while I was still in the service. Um, and if you are in the service, so I was married to a serviceman as well, mm -hmm. um, you have to be able, your child, ha you have to have a system in place where if you are called, if there's a national emergency, um, you are called to go one way and your partner is called yeah. to go another way. That's hard. Somebody has to take your child. Um, and that really was the foundational, I loved, I loved the idea of being in the service, but that was the foundational piece for me that, that I knew that it wasn't for me if we were both in the service. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I had my first child, was expecting my second child when I left, so I served uh, four years. Um, and then I, you know, was largely a full-time mom mm -hmm. looking for volunteer opportunities for a while. And I, my first experience in the community was was supporting other mothers mm -hmm. with new babies. Mm -hmm. um, was that formally or informally? Yep, formally. I, I was a volunteer for La Leche League International uh -huh, yeah. for uh -huh. about 20 Which years. Which is uh, to support breastfeeding right, with young to new mothers. Right, new moms, breastfeeding mm -hmm. primarily, but also extending into, into parenting and so okay. forth. So it was, it was mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and you were still a mother in the, of newborns yes, at that time? Yeah. So it was fresh on your mind? Fresh on my mind. Uh -huh. yep. yeah. So why? Uh, I worked through that organization a little bit. I was a leader. I was uh, in the accreditation department, which is a um, the process that leaders get accredited. And it was really my first introduction to uh, actually a nice bridge to the work that I want to go back to and do now. My first introduction into supporting people in their own experience, mm. as opposed to making my experience something that they needed to Right. Adopt. Ah, so uh -huh. it was. Uh, it actually was a really. It was a really good experience for mm. me, and I did that for a lot of years. Wow. Yep. And yeah. then as my kids aged into it, I volunteered more with scouting and sports mm -hmm. and schools. Scouting. PTA. Okay. Boy and Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Because you have sons and daughters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband was more the Boy Scout person, but yeah. I was a great support person there. Uh -huh. Um, but he did more of the, my husband is actually an Eagle Scout and is still involved in scouting in town. Wow. Um, and has actually never not been involved in scouting, even through high school, college, mm -hmm. Air Force, he's always been a part of a scout troop somewhere. Wow. Yeah. And, um, 
so yeah, so that that was a, a wonderful experience, and and somewhere in there, somewhere in there with those children and so forth, um, I found a part-time job at Hopkinton Drug and got certified to be a certified pharmacy technician. So I, wow. I did that for about 15 years. Uh -huh. I was about 11 years at Hopkinton Drug. Mm -hmm. um, loved loved that most especially uh, being part of the community so mm -hmm. most especially interacting with the customers and wow. my friends and neighbors in town. So. I imagine you get to see a good amount of the community working at Hopkinton yeah. Drug as a valuable uh, store yeah. and part of yeah. the town over time um, and so that's interesting uh, you know interesting flow of where you've been mm -hmm. through uh, Air Force and then uh, dealing directly on the front lines with mothers, right, <laughs> yes. uh, who are working with their children and, and supporting them. And really important what you say about going where they're at rather yeah. than what agenda you have to teach yes. them to get by. Yeah. And then on to the pharmacy. And um, you as a uh, pharmacy technician, technician mm -hmm. again, you, uh, that involves uh, advising? Um, no. So that advising, any advice actually comes directly from uh, the pharmacist in that scenario, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a lot of advocacy work though. Mm. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of interaction with doctors' offices, patients, and and more more often insurance companies. Uh -huh. So there's uh -huh. a lot of so advocacy work. That's um, right. And a lot of you know a lot of people, even people who are knowledgeable about the workings of insurance companies or their own medical needs or it, things like that. When you're in it for mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. it can be hard to advocate for yourself. Absolutely. That, that other person who is um, a little bit more objective in the process mm -hmm. um, and can embrace uh, you, you know, your experience and what you need and mm -hmm. advocate with and for you can be really important. Mm. Wow. Well, that's something I hadn't thought about in yeah. going over there. Yeah. And, uh, f with prescriptions and so forth, but it makes sense uh, given what I also know about uh, the direction you're going. Uh, in yeah. between, also, you've been involved in a lot of town government. A lot right? of town Can government. You? Yeah, I kind of missed that. Wow, I've got uh, yeah. <laughs> a so, selectman. You yes, said. Uh -huh. I was a selectman for three brilliant years. Mm -hmm. um, yes, thank you for that. <laughs> oh no, gosh, thank <laughs> you. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So I huh. so I transitioned at some point with a more of my volunteer work being in town government and uh, planning I think the planning board I, I've not been on the planning board but but that work and that facet of town government I think um, is most interesting to me mm. I worked um, one of my first roles was as the chairman of the master plan um, development uh, re rewrite committee 10 years ago now mm. I can't even believe wow. it right they're you're doing another revision now which is amazing um, that was really satisfying and wonderful work. Met a lot of people from all different walks of life with all different investments in Hopkinton, mm -hmm. right? So we all we all know our own reasons. Like this, this represents so much of what is the heart and soul of Hopkinton to me. But so many other people have other spots other and other interests. roles and other functionalities that represent what is vital and important to them. Mm -hmm. um, the Master Plan Committee really brought that together. That was kind of a wonderful experience in so many ways. To address where Hopkinton's going forward. Yeah, yeah. right. How, you know, how do planning, it's all about planning. Mm -hmm. How would we like to develop um, so that, you know, time, time marches on. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be. We might sometimes want to be the time, the town that time forgets. <laughs> but we don't really want to be that town. Right, but what do we right. want to be? Uh, you know, and where do yeah. we want to grow mm -hmm. uh, and develop? And where do we want to preserve? Mm -hmm. Where do we want to, you know, set our priorities for all those different, mm. those different functionalities and needs and so forth. So that, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And where do other people give their voice for uh, something as important as that? Yes. By showing yeah. up at local uh, regular town meetings yeah well town meeting is a lot of fun town meeting is um town meeting is so important mm -hmm. and also just a little if i had another spot to pick to mm -hmm. that we could be and it's a little ah. it's a little <laughs> campy good fun it is uh -huh. right um it's interesting one of my classes this this summer i took a class in policy and i read an article that uh mentioned that the research supports that people don't necessarily care as much about the outcome of government mm -hmm. if they trust the process. And they, they referenced as an example town meeting as being mm -hmm. something that many people love and mm -hmm. complain about. Right? Mm -hmm. Many people yeah. see the pluses and minuses yeah. in town 
town meeting. Um, but because they can be there and see it yeah. and say it mm -hmm. and vote it, um, they can accept the outcome. Mm -hmm. So it was an interesting, it was an interesting example. Wow. And an, and an interesting piece. So I, I love town meeting. I know that a lot of people, uh, mm. you know, a lot of people have a lot of emotions about it and see the inefficiencies. It, it's not, a, mm -hmm. you know, government is not an efficient process. Mm -hmm. um, probably the greatest gift of my involvement as a volunteer in town government is the ability to embrace uh, embrace the inefficiencies mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. in a very different way. Because mm -hmm. you know, I've had my I have had my opportunities to rail against the process mm -hmm. and the system and the decisions and the outcomes and so forth. But being getting in it, participating in it, um, affords you a, a very different perspective, and you begin to uh, not just to appreciate the the process, but appreciate all the people, all those people mm -hmm. who come to it with different priorities and different focuses, right? Um, and different goals, mm. per perhaps. Wow. But everybody's sort of in it together. That's um, a good uh, commercial for yeah. going to town meeting. Go to town meeting. <laughs> and you, uh, was there any other work? I want to so, talk about family too. Yeah. So I, I have in town government. I've done uh, the board of appeals uh, very briefly. Um, and uh, and I'm the deputy moderator actually, so I should be, I should be promoting town meeting. Aha! Uh -huh. yeah. All right, you've done your job <laughs> yeah, here then job. today. So let's talk a little bit about the very important part of your life being family. Yeah. When we talked a little in advance, and yeah. uh, bringing six children into the world and into Hopkinton, yep. um, yep. also what that means to you can talk about the importance of yeah, that, so, that path for you so family is family is the whole thing for me family is the whole thing so i have <laughs> children ranging in age from 15 to almost 30 <laughs> uh -huh, and wow. uh, boys and girls and uh, very 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 proud of the fact that i have um, been a very present mom mm -hmm. that's been important to me and that they are very um, they're very contributing people mm -hmm. as they as they emerge as adults. They all mm -hmm. find their place mm -hmm. to um, to make a contribution in other people's lives, mm -hmm. and, and uh, so it's been. Motherhood has been an amazing mm -hmm. journey, and I'm a grandmother now oh, too. Congratulations! So, wow, wow. Yes. first grandbaby has arrived. Uh huh. I've heard that's a very special uh, yeah. role to have in life as it's well. It's very special. Very special. It's kind of it's amazing to see your children become parents. That's yeah. just uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, mind one of the most important jobs I yes. do believe. Um, yeah. And um, so. Also, that what do you think uh, is important about uh, keeping the family, uh, supporting family, and helping family to grow strong together? I know you mentioned family night. And yeah. Oh, so yeah. So I think that every family, um, you know, they need to find what is important to them, mm -hmm. right? So that that kind of goes with my philosophy. What has worked and been necessary for me isn't necess necessarily yeah. that which is important and necessary for other families, but um, we we spend a lot of very casual time together. Probably the best example of what I think has been important to us is uh, is outdoors, mm -hmm. right? We do a lot outdoors, mm -hmm. um, but family camping, for example, when we did family camping, um, at first because we couldn't really afford to do anything yeah. mm -hmm. fancier or better, um, Six we children. never yeah <laughs> we never had technology with us. So mm -hmm. when we can. Ah. We are, you know, we're cooking together, we're cleaning together, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're bored together, mm -hmm. we're uh, fighting off the elements together, we're playing cards mm -hmm. together, we're sitting, poking a campfire together. Um, and that's, that's been, that's a really good example of what is important to us, is just um, not necessarily s specifically scheduled time, not destination time for us, um, but finding a spot and a place to be together mm. um, and doing it doesn't have to be doing anything particular we do play an awful lot of cards and it's pretty competitive <laughs> around the Kramer table uh -huh. I will say that oh, but that sounds <laughs> fun and not something that happens so much anymore but yeah we have to put some games away some uh -huh. games can't be played anymore for a little while they have mm -hmm. to get a break mm -hmm. but uh, but well. it's all it's all good fun Congratulations on hearing how your family is growing over time and mm -hmm. still having fun. Yes, yeah. 
Um, uh, so we have two minutes left at okay. this point, and I know also you're moving on in a new direction. If my you could talk about being a student again after yeah. all this work you've done yeah. in life. Yeah, my next chapter, and this is kind of exciting. Um, I'm getting my, my uh, graduate degree in, in, in social work at Boston College. Mm -hmm. I hope to be working. They have a, two programs at Boston College for social work. One is a clinical program. What I think I always thought of for social work is one-on-one -on -one client work. And they have a macro program, which is really systems oriented. Mm -hmm. So communities or organizations mm -hmm. or policy. Mm -hmm. And both uh, sound so much like who you are. Yeah, you're and it's, um, that's where I am. And I'm, uh, I am blessed to be in that environment. I have made many, many, many wonderful connections and friendships mm -hmm. with people who are largely much younger to me again. Mm -hmm. again. Um, I am intellectually working really hard, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. loving it, mm -hmm. and uh, and doing the work that a lot of my children are doing actually at the same time. Mm. How about trying that? to yeah. find what it is I'm going to do next. What wow. is it? You know, what am I going to be when I grow up? And, <laughs> and a question uh, we're always asking, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. I think life is best if we can always be. And for me, again, for me, but mm. but to always be aiming at something and working towards something and. Um, contributing into your community or your larger communities mm. is really where it's at for me. Well, I think that you really represent that in this brief time together. And now we are at the end. The magic moment. <laughs> and thank you so much. I have enjoyed it so much. Thank you and best wishes for where you go forward thank from you. here as well. Thank have you. a good summer by yes, the lake. Yes, by the lake. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Cheryl Peralt, co-producer of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, an HCAM series honoring poetry, story, and song that takes place on the third Saturday each month before a live audience. Guest features share their art followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Others come to listen and be part of this warm and welcoming studio and to wake up a bit to arts and to life. You're welcome to join us and to tune in or visit our website for our weekly program. Hope you can join us. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive and Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interest. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at hcam.tv for movie days and showtimes.